What's going on, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Factory Tour. He's back. He being Matt Ward, second ever guest on this show. Such a long time ago, way back in April, before the NFL draft, before so many things. Our world was entirely different. But yeah. Matt is the uh, he is the lead writer and director of content at Brodo Fantasy. I've been itching to have him back on. We had a great discussion the first time. We're going to touch on some of those same topics again today. Before we do, Matt, how are you feeling tonight? Good, man. I'm really excited. I've been following along like basically every week, every episode, watching your lives and everything. So I'm excited to be back on. This has become one of my favorite little guilty pleasure shows for sure, because I don't have much time to uh, dive into the podcast world as far as consumption of content. So this has been one of the ones that I've been excited to keep up with for sure. Well, that means a whole lot to me. I, I really, you know, I respect your work in the space. And so it means a lot if you're if you're listening and then now you're here. So you get to listen to yourself in a couple yeah, of no, days. I out, might not right? listen back to this one because I'm a little <laughs> nervous, but I'm, I'm really excited to be oh, here. Oh, please. No need to be nervous. We're going <laughs> to jump into some news. We have some news that's not just beat report hype. We have some concrete money being thrown around. Finally, some of these running back shoes have dropped. We have Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook both being signed to spots they were rumored to sign in. It actually did pan out. So we have Ezekiel Elliott signing with the Patriots uh, and Dalvin Cook signing with the Jets, both going to the AFC East. And I have my thoughts on, on how these backfields are going to play out. But honestly, I'd love to just kick it to you first. Let's start with the Patriots because I think that situation is maybe a little bit less interesting, um, at least to me. So how do you see things shaking out now that Ezekiel Elliott is a New England Patriot? Well, I think it was kind of rumored and, and part of the reason that he was going to go there is that like the Patriots obviously needed more of a goal line back and a guy in between the tackles for short yardage situations. Ramondre Stevenson being one of the more efficient backs everywhere else in the field, but seemingly falling apart inside of the five and Zeke, even in his old age, obviously still putting up 12 touchdowns all or 10 of which come inside of the five yard line. So Zeke, certainly is going to bolster that you could see him doing some jamal williams-esque vulturing mm. of Ramondre stevenson's touchdown ceiling but i i don't think this moves the needle for Ramondre as much as it does for the other running back that we will inevitably talk about in the afc east here yeah. um zeke has long been an inefficient plotter and obviously a guy that had incredible per touch efficiency numbers and Tony Pollard was able to overthrow him in his lifelong backfield and and still put up serviceable weekly ceilings and high output ceilings um, even when Zeke was healthy and on the field when they shared the field so I do feel it's kind of you're still going to see maybe like a 65 35 split and that 35 in Zeke's favor is going to be a lot of useless low um value touches right no i agree with that take you know the goal line stuff is really the the only question and i'm, I'm not even convinced that he's going to get a designated role there because the patriots didn't do that last year they sort of just rotated harris and Ramondre series is um and who knows if like if Ramondre is actually bad at it or if it's just like sample variants i don't i don't know for sure he's a big guy you'd, you'd think he could handle his goal line work but uh, either way, there were, there were plenty of running back touches in this backfield that Ramondre Stevenson wasn't going to get. Somebody was going to get them, whether it's Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris. Those guys are, are effectively phased out at this point, and now it's Ezekiel Elliott. But I, I don't think that this affects Ramondre's so – I don't think it affects his ceiling outcome at all. Um, and, and I right. think, you know, like you said, it, it could affect the median outcome a little bit if we do see Zeke mix in for some goal line, even if he's not the exclusive goal line back. He, he could be on the field when they get there and, and then they leave him in. And like you said, Jamal Williams, you know, he scored 18 touchdowns last year. So it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Zeke could do something like that. Um, but yeah, the ceiling case is unchanged and I'm going to make the same argument for Brees Hall. But basically when we draft a player, especially running backs, we're thinking like, okay, how does this go right for the player? What's the, the best possible outcome? And most of the time that's what we're shooting for because that's what's going to propel you to a championship and the best case scenario for Ramondre Stevenson is still playing, you know, a, a high volume role, being a workhorse based on his talent and, and his talent is not changed due to this signing. So whatever ceiling he possessed before is not changed because they brought in Ezekiel. Elliott. If he has right. the ability to dominate this role, take the goal line, take all the, the passing work, he's still going to do that. Um, and so I, I, you know, maybe you move him down a couple of spots, in whatever redraft rankings you might have. 
but this this has very little impact on his dynasty ranking for me yeah yeah i i agree in that sense especially from a long-term outcome like Ramondre was, you know, like I, I've got the numbers right here, but Ramondre was a little inefficient when it came to like those goal line carries again, just a 9.3% mm. conversion percentage, whereas Zeke had a 30.7% conversion percentage. And obviously I don't think Bill Belichick would ever admit that he's in a rebuild at any year. So it's more so just a, a like a real life football move. And I don't think that, you know, it, Zeke didn't negatively affect Tony Pollard and I think Ramondre Stevenson is a very similar style player especially when it comes to explosive run percentage and you know big playability so mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense I mean that is a big difference in terms of the conversion percentage and so I think there's there's some validity to that idea I don't I don't see how the Pats could be in a rebuilding window I mean they have Devontae Parker Juju Smith-Schuster <laughs> they have Mac Jones I mean I, I don't know this seems like yeah. a Super Bowl contender to me um, in the AFC East at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, I kind of hope the Latavius Murray smoke is real so that all Me of too. these backfields in the AFC East can all be featuring like a 30 year old washed up. No, nothing. <laughs> Cause like we have Jeff Wilson, we have Ezekiel Elliott, we have Dalvin cook. I just think it would be fun Raheem. to have Latavius Murray. Also Raheem Mostert. It might be, it might be a little disrespectful to put Dalvin cook into that group. And maybe we can talk about him now. Um, I don't think he's as washed up as Zeke. Like he hasn't been quite as bad over the past two years. There's some idea that he was limited by a shoulder injury, but definitely has been more inefficient over the past two seasons has not been even an above average rusher, uh, despite the box scores, despite the, you know, the counting stats. So he goes and signs in New York, Brees Hall, obviously coming off the ACL, but similar to the Patriots, there was really nothing behind him, right? They had Michael Carter, who's, proved to be a pretty uninspiring backup. Um, we, they had Zonovan Knight who had like one or two interesting games and then fell off an efficiency cliff. And then they drafted Izzy Abanacanda in the fifth round, who was like super raw prospect. I think he's 20 years old. So they really yeah. had nothing behind Brees Hall. They had, they're all in with Aaron Rodgers for this year. I think this move makes sense in that sense where, you know, Hall is not guaranteed to be himself or to be fully healthy this year. So it makes sense to get some insurance with Dalvin Cook. Do you think there's more to that? What do you, how do you see this backfield shaping up specifically early in the year uh, as Hall is maybe getting eased back in? Yeah, obviously there's a little bit of a higher value assumption when it comes to Brees Hall over Ramondre Stevenson, but this is in essentially what I meant with it moves the needle a little bit more. Brees Hall was officially removed from the physically unable to perform list today. Um, he's going to be involved in some preseason and, obviously for the rest of training camp, which is great. That's good news. Like you could see him play and suit up as early as week one. But I also think that's a very obvious signing that's saying he's not going to get the workload that's leading to Brees Hall being the RB2 dynasty in the fifth or sixth running back taken off the board in redraft leagues. Um, that volume is probably going to come much later in the season than we all want. And mm -hmm. again, Dalvin Cook, as far as like, being as washed as Zeke, no, but you nailed it, and I won't beat a dead horse. And it also comes with Aaron Rodgers renegotiating his contract, but doing it quite late in the offseason where there weren't very many viable offensive free agents available. So yeah. this is really just a good faith signing from the Jets to Aaron Rodgers. It's a one-year contract with basically most of the salary cap space that Aaron Rodgers um, decided to reallocate being allocated to Dalvin cook. So it, it's a signing that makes sense for that team. Again, there's not much depth there. And it's certainly, in my opinion, was the best available veteran as far as all of these veteran free agents that were looking for homes, seek Kareem hunt Fournette, and rounding out with cook. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's also a position where he's, probably going to see you know 200 220 touches this season but i don't think it necessarily should remove or move people off the fact that Brees hall is still a top three dynasty running back and, and he's going to come back at some point in this season and perform and remind you all why yeah absolutely totally agree with that i think you made a really great point about the the late signing um because the money does kind of impact the way people look at this right because he didn't sign for pennies on the dollar he did get a pretty sizable chunk of change but as you pointed out, th there's no one else to sign. Like this is a one-year deal. The cap hit is only for this year. Th their money isn't put aside for anything else. So it doesn't really matter the same way it would if they had signed him to that kind of money in March. And right. that is something we need to remember. 
but yeah, like I said with Ramondre, I don't think this impacts the ceiling for Hall. If he is that guy, if he's the guy he looked like early last season before he tore his ACL, especially by late in the season, he absolutely can monopolize this backfield, get the high value touches. There are already beat reporters, or at least one I saw saying this is Hall's backfield. As soon as he's fully That's healthy, he's be. the bell cow. We just don't know exactly when that will be, but it's been all good signs so far. So Certainly, there is a possibility of re-injury with ACLs um, or even like a slow start. We saw with J.K. Dobbins last year, but that's not a guarantee. And in the scenario where you're drafting Brees Hall, you're already banking on the ceiling outcome. Like if you draft Brees Hall in the third round and he is limited by his ACL, gets re-injured, whatever, you're you're done whether or not Dalvin Cook is on the Jets or not. Like it doesn't change the thesis of the pick. So for me. This is another situation where it impacts the median outcome for this year, but it doesn't impact what I think is the ultimate upside, and it doesn't move him for me in Dynasty. I still have him as my RB2. Uh, really, the only guy I'd consider alongside him is Jameer Gibbs, who hasn't yet proven to be as good as Brees Hall and also has a, a running mate in David Montgomery who's pretty similar to Dalvin Cook. So, yeah, for me, this isn't a huge deal. Uh, it seemed like kind of an inevitability, um, and that's where I'm at with Hall. Now, Looking at the the two backs that were signed specifically in Dynasty, do you have any interest in in picking up either of these guys? No, and, and conversely, I was kind of just going to piggyback on that. Like, I don't think it moves the ceiling much for the guys that they're joining in, in the younger Dynasty prospects that we enjoy in Ramondre and Brees Hall. Um, and I don't think it does anything for their value either. Like, I don't think people should be running to, you know, increase the value of either one of these guys on the draft boards. Like, still in that RB 40 to 50 range is, is fine by me sort of thing for a guy like Zeke. Um, obviously, Dalvin Cook a little bit higher, but it's... I really think that... It, both of those guys, for one, are in that range of players that their production value does not matter whatsoever when it comes to reaccruing value on the trade market. Like they mm -hmm. could put up 18 points per game and you're not going to get more than a second. So, yeah. right. So with both of those guys, and again, I'll kind of retrocede a little bit. It's like if we assumed that. Brees Hall is good enough to be Brees Hall and that Ramondre Stevenson is good enough to be Ramondre, then these two like pillars of dying running backs are mm -hmm. not going to get in the way. And it's also kind of goes to like the whole money standpoint of like the Vikings felt it more pertinent to start Alexander Madison and cut Dalvin Cook with a dead cap hit than to keep him on the team. So like, do you think Madison's more talented than Brees Hall? <laughs> I do not. Uh, yeah, I don't, it's, it's don't think that's thing. a... It shouldn't move the needle much yeah. at all. It's just just for that early start of season production for Brees Hall, and I think even less for Ramondre. Yeah, totally agree there. I think these guys are going to get chased up the board in Dynasty and Redraft much higher than an I'm willing to pay the price. Yeah. I had a little bit of cook in, in best ball. Um, I don't think I'll be getting any more because I expect he's going to jump a lot more than I'd like to see. The market seems to react to just any kind of situational certainty with positive, like positive feedback. If he, he could get signed anywhere and he would go up in ADP. Yeah, so exactly. I'm kind of done drafting him. Um, Zeke, I wasn't drafting. I'm still not drafting. I, his, his base best case scenario is like 400 rushing yards and like five touchdowns. Like I really don't see any way that he's going to get enough volume to do more than that. He's not going to get pass down work. Um, I don't really even think he has that much contingent value if Ramondre were to get hurt. I, I think agree. they would just mix in Pierre Strong, who's much more explosive, and they'd mix in these other guys. They'd bring back Ty Montgomery from wherever he's being cryogenically frozen <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at the time. Um, with with Dalvin, I do think there's more contingent value because I think this will be a good offense, and I think the other backs there are just sort of unproven. Like if Hall does get re-injured early in the season, knock on wood, uh, I think Cook could definitely have a, a significant workload for the year, yes. and he could definitely finish as like a high-end RB2. That would not surprise me because I think he has a little bit left in the tank. Rodgers is going to want him out there. That's a scenario that I can see, but not someone I'm eager to trade for in Dynasty where I think after this year he's totally dust and could be dust as soon as, you know, week five. I guess I don't see a difference really between Dalvin Cook and like Samaj P. Ryan. Like, yeah, pretty, pretty much the same. You're both backing up a running back coming off an ACL. Neither of you have very much juice. You're all sort of just, you're all purpose competent and not really excelling at anything at this point. So that's sort of the bucket that I'd put him in.
maybe slightly. yeah I, I, would, I, I think that's a fair range of outcomes as well because for the exact same situation like Samaji could definitely give you an RB 15 point per game season if Javante can't suit up for all 17 and he's mm. you know handed up Sean Payton yeah monster workload yep so that's really where we're at. It sounds like we're both still pretty bullish on Hall and Ramondre. Uh, I still yeah, prefer I'm Ramondre. Yeah, legitimately not really adjusting my rankings on either one of them. Yeah. Yeah, so I still prefer Ramondre and Dynasty to guys like Najee Harris, um, yes. Damian Pierce, Derrick Henry. I'm still taking him over those guys. So I, I don't think this should move the needle very much. Yeah, uh, he's uh, RB12. Perfect. Perfect.